And just like that, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. You know you couldn't get rid of us. We were gone for all of like eight minutes, and we're back at the action right now. The Round Valley Elks getting ready to face off against the Sholo Cougars in their senior night. And we are off. Sholo kicks, drops back. 
Playing out to the wing. Hey, what's our field goal kicker doing out there? Yeah. Cholo playing, going up the side. So how much do you think Kevin's having to tell himself under the post? Under, under the, the post. Yeah, under the under post. Hey, since, since to the left side. Hey, anybody streaming at home, if you were in the dome within the last hour and you ha can describe a wallet you might have lost. <laughs> That's true. And we'll get the mic and we'll announce it to the locals here in just a minute. We just had a, wa a wallet brought to us. Trying to lighten things up a little bit. Sorry about I that. I like it. Yeah. yeah, sorry. We are just a little bit somber. We just observed a, a moment of silence for some families in our community. Um, the Hogan and the Browning families with a loss just recently, with the loss of, of Kira Hogan, Kira Browning Hogan. And um, Coach Hogan coached here for a number of years, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken. I know he played here. And so. Yeah, yeah. he was my assistant coach, and then he took over as the head coach when I had to resign so yeah great guy yeah so give us a sec guys we'll get things we'll get things turned back up and a little more lively for us we're just got hit with a little little humble pie i think but here we are 38 eight and a half minutes left against the sholo cougars round valley boys senior night round valley with only three seniors not graduating graduating quite as many as the lady elks did um, round valley coming off of a great win Cross to the outside. Ooh, hard hit shot right to the middle. And goal. Looks like there was a call, though. Yep, pre-shot. Offsides. There's an offsides call. Hey, but he did a really good job at shooting right at the yellow, too, though, Cass. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay, let me see. I think this is Sholo stuff here. All right. Let's see if we can get some numbers for you for both the Elks and for the Cougars. Yeah, the yellow on white is really hard to read. Remember a couple of years ago, Round Valley had that going on. We had some jerseys that were like white on white. I think I literally think it was white numbers on white jersey. Don't look through the bifocals, but that actually brings out the contrast in the numbers. Yep, you can actually read them. Okay, so you don't you need tinted bifocal or tinted, <laughs> tinted binoculars. Bi <laughs> uh, oh, my dad's got a pair Reese of those cheaters that he loves. Sh shot that fires up there. Oh, a little Round bit of a battle over the ball. Yep, fighting, contesting for the ball. So, Cass, I'm already feeling like the game is at a different speed. Yeah, and, and, is, and that's normal between girls and boys soccer. You just see it turned up, and will it maintain this for the 80 minutes of soccer? It will. It will. And you'll also see uh, a lot more, uh, I guess, I, I don't know how to put it, sk not skill-wise, but a lot more passing, so to speak. Structure, maybe? Structure. Uh, and, and, and I think it's just because uh, – like, girls will get in and bump, and, and we talked about how physical it is. Right. And boys will respect because they don't want to get burned. So they'll respect it as the ball gets passed around. Shot for Sholo. It's going to be an early 0-1 lead for the Cougars. Oh, wow. I missed that. Grab. Shot on goal. Grab your phone and go back on the live stream. Hit that rewind button a little bit. You can check the replay there. Shot on goal for the Sholo Cougars. Early one-point lead. 36 minutes left in the first half. Extrema coming up. Crescing. Battling for the ball. All right. So, again, the white on yellow. I believe that's number 18 Control. for the Cougars. Um, Caden Kerr. I did not expect him to move as go. fast as he Ramon did. we got Ramon going down. Attack on goal. Sholo kicks it out of bounds. Looks like it's going to be a round volley throw in. There you saw the Sholo guy grab it and think, you know, trying to do what I t said before, grab it and do it, and the ref had to stop him. Right. Say, no, no, that's not your ball. Oh, nice placement by round nice volley. Place. We got Ramon, nice kick. Oh, man. Oh, off the post, comes back. Man, with his right foot, I didn't anticipate him shooting on goal with his right foot there. Right. And, and he shot with the right half of his foot, too. It looked like Correct. he kicked. That's crazy. I, yeah. can, I can barely stay up upright. <laughs> and that's, that's a different technique for your kicking. You want to make sure that you kick in the right direction and you put the right spin on it. Because it, when you kick with your foot, it's kind of like a golf 
club. Okay. You know, the direction and the angle and everything that you do determines how high it is, how low, how direct. And so you practice all those different types of kicks. And I wonder how different it is to kick a football and a field goal and it is a soccer ball. Because I just worry, how much does Kevin have to switch his brain when it gets to the football field, right? I don't think he has to that much. And I think it, a result of it, you'll see because a lot of kickers kick c soccer style. Okay, yeah, yeah, fair enough. And so I think it's very similar. And once you've learned the direction on the kick that the ball's going to go, I think you're okay. Shot on goal, off, off the, the post. post. Clancy had a term for that, and I don't remember what it was. I'm going to have to go back and find my text messages. When we were in high school, every time it was off, it was take a lap. <laughs> 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 every every time you shot and it was on goal, <laughs> take a lap. <laughs> like, oh. Gotta love conditioning. <laughs> My boy just started middle school wrestling, and that's what it was. He was talking about all the suicides the, the <laughs> workman had him doing this morning. And um, Amanda was like, did somebody get in trouble? He's like, no, that's just practice. <laughs> Shaman Madrid, one of your seniors. Shaman, big defensive player, Coach Morris was telling me. Uh, that's good. So what was that call there, Cass? Just stop play? Did too much? No, he pushed him in the back. Oh, okay. The guy was trying to settle the ball at his feet, and the guy came up and hit him from behind. One of the big things about soccer, anytime there's an attack from behind, it's going to be a penalty. Okay. And how much will that factor in? Are refs watching that, and they watch for repeat offenders, and is that where a yellow card will factor in eventually? No, no. Yellow yellow cards come into play when it's deliberate, trying to hurt the other player. Flagrant something. Yeah. Okay. If you're playing the ball, they, 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 it, you'll, you won't get a yellow card for, the, for playing the ball. So very similar to Sholo's football program, it looks like we are outsized just a little bit here on the soccer field today. Well, and, and this goes back to kind of what I talked about before. Uh, you, you see Round Valley's team filled with freshmen through seniors. Yep. And they're all making the team, and that's how many you can get. Sholo's a bigger school, so I would venture to say the majority of them are juniors or seniors. Well, you might, may have sophomores, but the majority are probably upperclassmen. Well, and you look at their roster that they have on Max Preps. There was a second page, and I didn't even tell it to print because you've got kids right here that don't even have numbers. We had, I want to say there was 36 or so on the roster. And so, yeah, they have depth. You're obviously not, you're obviously not bringing all those kids. It looks like we have about 20 here. But is there, is there a roster limit for soccer? Um, no, but a good team, if you're fully staffed, would be if you could have 22 players. Depth. So you had, yeah. So you have 11 on the field, 11 off, and then you can rotate it. Years ago when Blue Ridge was really dominating, they would have two sets of 11, and they would just kill you because they just rotate 11 in, 11 out, 11 in. 11 Fresh out. legs, yep. period. And they were all very well skilled, and so as a result, you just saw that they were – they just – dominated they did very well well and with that much depth you could you pair those people together you have three or four kids that know how to play together that feel each other out you put them all in at the same time and that's cohesiveness right, right. there's no loss bringing one person in and then readjusting it's just always there yeah. yeah and like you said you look you look at the size difference between Sholo and Round Valley and Round Valley has some that match up with with them but the whole team isn't size and maturity wise the same as what Sholo has. You're saying some of our bigger players are as big as some of their smaller players. Is that what you're saying? Or, <laughs> or, <laughs> no, I'm saying some of our bigger players match up with some right, of their right. big players, but they've got all 11 that are bigger players. Yep. <laughs> and we have our juniors and seniors. Well, and like I said, seeing this number, I believe it was 18 Caden Kerr right here in the middle. I didn't expect the wheels on him for as stout as he is as a player. Uh, I believe he's playing midfielder, possibly defender here for Sholo. Yeah, yeah. And he he controls the ball and you can see see and you can tell that. Right. He's wiry. <laughs> that was for you, now We Dan. got a corner kick for round ball. It goes like right that? to the goalie. If they could get a little more lift, that could have been a great opportunity. Uh, 
I don't know if I'd describe him as Whitey. Maybe a big mamma jamma, but <laughs> not Whitey. <laughs> mamma jamma. <laughs> I love that. That's why we bring Dan along. It really is. We, you know, we're letting him push buttons tonight, which is kind of scary all on its own, but it's going well so far. Well, how else does he learn the system, right? That's what I'm talking about. I control the video. <laughs> 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 Nice throwing. You want to see your kid on the live stream? Hey. Text and move. <laughs> Text and move. <laughs> Another yep. thing you'll see with the boys playing, their throw-ins go a lot farther. Yep. You know, with the girls we saw, they were a lot of short throw-ins. But boys can pretty much throw to the middle of the field. Nice kick there by Shaman, I believe that was. Ball out about midfield. Round Valley's ball. Just under 30 minutes of play here in the first half. Sholo leading by one with an early goal within about three minutes of play. I'm noticing the tempo's a lot different. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Speed is a definite difference between the two. Um, yeah. You see that at the college level, too. I remember, again, watch, we go, we'd go watch Clancy play, and it was a drastic difference between the girls that would play and then the boys come on the field. Same, same thing. Yeah. Nice oh, pass by Sholo. Madrid trying to get it defensively. He's going to get it out. Oh, he's going to hang on to it and get it back in play. Well, out on Sholo, I think. Show. Yeah, I think he's going to have a throw in there. Yeah, good. Works out in Round Valley's play favor there. So since we're doing a soccer broadcast, if I get out of line or say something smart, I look, I guess I'm being cheeky. Cheeky. Oh, my goodness. You get out of line, Cass is just going to start yelling at you in <laughs> Spanish. No don't more. worry about it. You know, I don't think I've ever heard no Cass more. raise his voice, to be honest. And I've given him several opportunities <laughs> while he's reffing <laughs> junior high football <laughs> games. <laughs> just saying. That's because I just don't listen. Oh. <laughs> he's got that selective hearing dialed in. Yeah, well, he must be selective <laughs> deaf because I can overcome – being ignored. <laughs> I don't know. We can ask Lisa. We get her on the phone real quick. A little call-in situation. <laughs> oh, you know what? That'd be a fun conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I think it comes to you just being nice, knowing that I'm just there helping out. Oh, oh he's there just it helping is. out. He's just yeah. helping out. I'm not gonna over <laughs> explode on him. You know what? I appreciate. I appreciate anybody that volunteers and does that time. You know, little league umpires. High and outside. Ooh. Junior high refs, all of them. I appreciate anybody willing to volunteer their time to do that. Any, any official period, right? Correct. That you couldn't pay me enough to be <laughs> on the field right now. And I love the people that do it. I know some of the officials. Like we, we work with Paul Hancock and stuff. I know Quinn Ashton, you know, Mike Hauser we just saw on the yeah. pitch. Uh, great people. I just It's for the love of the game. It, it has control. to be. Absolutely. Ooh. And someone's got to. What would... I mean, we wouldn't have anything if we didn't have people willing to do it. Right. So, no, hat goes out to them. I, I, I think I would struggle at this competitive level. That was a nice send to number eight. Oh, nice. Oh, nice wide. cross, just a little bit wide. So it, it's not on film. It's not on film. But I, we're sitting here chatting up hey, officials, wait, what, right? What? Did you see what Chavis did on the, about the 35-yard line? What? Volleyball comes in. He, on the run, slides, scoops it up, throws it up as he's gaining his feet to keep up with that play. Man, if <laughs> only the video guy could have gotten that on camera. <laughs> well, oh, neither who's... cameraman had that. <laughs> <laughs> so we see the replay of there that. There was no clicking on that. There we go. Uh, well, Cass, you talk about volunteerism and to pivot away from soccer, even though we're at a soccer game. Um, in the job that you have, I'm sure you're involved with so much of what the school does. How much does volunteerism factor into that? I mean, seeing teachers and parents in the classroom, seeing volunteers doing their thing, I mean, that has to be a huge thing for the school. Well, and it is. And, you know, a lot of our areas of the school district couldn't function without volunteers. And, you know, at the elementary school, we've got parents that are going in, volunteering, and helping out in classes extensively. And those teachers are so thankful for all that they do. Oh, it looks like we have a run. Oh, aggressive. Come out and kicked it. Big defense there by the Round yeah, Valley Elks. They're fighting. Was that Daniel Pena? That's Who was Daniel it? Daniel Pena. Oh, kicking nice it play. Out. Yeah, he's working hard. Super aggressive move by the keeper to come out as far as he did. Correct. 
And, and but that's what you teach. That's what you got to do as you come out. You because it creates difficulty for the offense. And as you saw, he fumbled it and stuff. Where if you stay back, he has plenty of time to set, set up, up and, and shoot. shoot. Yeah. So Cass, what I'm seeing out here is. You know, everybody's trying to set up. Whether you're on defense, you're trying to set up against the offense and vice versa. Because of the dynamics of this game, how do you recover and stop and get your people back where they need to be? Because I noticed that it's very easy for players to become bunched up and just leave folks kind of out there uncovered. How do, I mean, how do you, as a coach, how do you get your how do you get your players back in their positions? when there's no stop in the action? Well, uh, it, a lot of it is, is taught in practice. And, you know, that's part of the reason why it's kicked out of bounds or it's, you know, you say, clear it, clear it. You'll see, hear them yelling stuff like that so that, you know, we're in tr trouble. If it keeps going this way, they're going to score. So kick it out and let us go to our positions or where we need to go to get set. Sholo also playing super aggressive. You see that keeper come 30 yards out of his goal to get that ball right there on that last play by Round Valley right. as they were making an aggressive offensive move. Um, I think my answer to your question, Dan, even though it was to Cass, is that the coach has nothing to do with it at that point. That's what right. soccer is so player-led and so dynamic that in that moment the kids, like you said, just have to know from practice mm -hmm. what I need to do in that moment. So it takes kids with a good game sense then. To, to put a to field a good soccer team, you need players that have a good sense of the field, good read of the field, and a good game sense. Correct. And, and you practice situational things. I mean, I, I would always try to do drills and different things that would present present in games, which I think you would do in most every sport. Uh, but that helps them so when they're in the game, they know where they're going, they know what to do, and they know how to recover. And then again, again communication. If you don't have communication where they're talking, you go here, you go here, I got here, I got back, you got there, you know, just mm -hmm. explaining, you know, what's going on. And it, it that, and when that doesn't happen, that's usually when lapses happen, which that's probably how Sholo got their goal. Early I didn't on. see it, but I'm sure there was some sort of lapse, something, and Sholo was able to sneak, sneak in and get a goal in. Well, and, and that has to talk into team cohesiveness and, being a team that plays as a team because if you can't play together and you're not playing and liking each other at all, how can you expect to communicate and want to be that one, Correct. right? Because yeah. I know when, like, when my family, when we're not dialed in, we're not communicating well, <laughs> things aren't getting done well, <laughs> you know, and I, I think that's across the board. If the team isn't happy with each other, you're going to see it on the field right away. Correct. Yeah. Well, the family analogy is a great one because being the only male in the house, I'm always out of step <laughs> with the other three. Dan swims in the estrogen ocean, <laughs> as it were. They have a they have a telekinesis that I just cannot keep up with. <laughs> no, it's called the group text, Dan. Is that <laughs> what it is? I'm not a part of the group no. chat. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's magic. So yeah. now I understand the strategy now about getting it out. I get that now. Especially in the boys' game where it's so much faster. Right. 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 I mean, you just, you've got to because there are times that if you don't, you're in trouble and they're going to score. <laughs> and so you kick it out so we can get set. And you see how much hustle there is still. When it's out, there's a player there as soon as they can. They're throwing it in because they're trying to maintain that momentum as much as they can. Well, and you teach them if you can, grab it and throw it. Yep. Hopefully there's no subs and <laughs> you can keep playing. Well, and if there is a substitute, the ref's going to stop play anyway, right? And so right. get it in and right. go, and it's no harm, no foul. And Correct. it's almost wing and a prayer. Hope that hope that somebody is there to catch the ball. Yeah. Just saw Marissa LaRue. Haven't seen her in a minute. Yeah, yeah she's helping coach the girls. You want to join us, Marissa? You want to talk about the, the, the game? Yeah, sit down. Absolutely, we just talked. Literally have no idea what I'm going to say, but years and years on a microphone, you kind of gain a filter in the moment, I think. <laughs> but still, I think there's been three things that I regret slightly saying tonight. We'll just <laughs> go back and watch the tape. Me too. <laughs> well, while we got a little bit of a lull in the action, tell us about the girls' game. Oh, man, I don't even know where to start. It was fun. That's exciting. Great very, soccer. Very exciting. Both sides of the ball, the whole 100 minutes. It was great soccer. 
you know, I just told them to persevere to the end, you know, no matter what the score was. You know, it's they've come a long way, and that's all that matters. Yeah. Well, the thing that I was telling them is it looked like Round Valley just wanted it more. And Absolutely. that was a huge difference because we were winning every ball and we were doing everything that we needed to win, which is huge. Absolutely. You know, last when, we, when we went over there and played, we were down 3-0. And we wow. came back with five minutes left, scored the g or tied the game up, and then went to overtime and lost. So this is a much-needed one for us for sure. That's so awesome. Well, and I think it's fair to say, and again, correct me if I'm way off, but it seemed like those two teams were really fairly matched. And I think the score reflected that and the play reflected that. I feel like Round Valley did a better job controlling the ball, but maybe less, I mean, obviously less successful shots on goal when it counted right then. But I felt like it was just a well-matched game, both sides yeah. of the ball. Yeah, after coming off last night, you know, that devastating loss. But, you know, work hard, play harder, you know. That's all that matters. And that can definitely wake you up a little bit. We saw that with Round Valley sh when they went to Safford and lost on the football side of things. You talked to some of those players. They were completely different players the next week, and that's persisted. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to Seth Wiltbank for a few minutes, and he, he says, you don't – that doesn't feel good. You know, you don't want a loss like that. Nobody yeah. did. Again, yeah. really close game, really great game, but you're on the wrong side of the scoreboard, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I still remember some of the losses we took when I was in high school. And – you know, they, they just sit with you, but, you know. Then you got to bounce back. Because exactly. And yeah. the thing that's great about soccer and s a lot of other sports is you have a game the next night or in two nights. You have to shake so it off. It's, yeah, you shake it off and you play. Yeah, one of the, one of the most important things I've learned uh, playing sports throughout my whole life, like college, you know, you take that win and celebrate it for the rest of the night or take that loss and, you know, get over it that same day but as soon as the next day starts you're focused on the next thing well and as a coach how do you com how do you teach your kids to compartmentalize that how do you help them silo those games day to day yeah, uh, you know i don't really know it's just kind of just one of those things you know like like tonight our win tonight you know enjoy that win for the rest of the night come tomorrow at practice we're focused okay. on what's next now Coach Hamlin told us this this win may have gotten you guys into the playoffs. Is that accurate? Yes. Um, unfortunately, we don't really know. I just know in PowerPoint ratings right now, they were negative 0 0.1, and we were negative 0 0.3. So we're right neck and neck with them. So, you know, hopefully this win will bring us up and we can play a couple more games or if not just one more. But – so you have one more away game to wrap up the regular season? No, tonight was it. This was it. This was it. Yep, and a much-needed win for sure. Uh, so hopefully hopefully it works out in our favor and we're able to get a seed into the playoffs. Yeah, and, you know, playing Blue Ridge, we're both fighting for that number six seed. So if we if we bump up, they're, they're out for the tournament, which will be nice. Yeah. I've never not seen Blue Ridge in the tournament. Right. When we were talking a little bit about that, how great it is to beat Blue Ridge. Oh, absolutely. They're a soccer powerhouse in the White Mountains, that's for sure. Especially on your home field. That's well, the best. Well, and you build that legacy, and you draw a target on your back. I mean, a program like Blue Ridge, boys, girls, whatever, they, they know that it's there. And so that pressure is there from day one, right? right? Absolutely. Looks like we just had a yellow card. Uh, number 10, Caden Brashears. Yep, Caden got a yellow card. I saw it at midfield. It must have just been more aggressive than what I saw. Yeah, it, well, he came from behind, and it almost, I think that they thought that it looked deliberate, like he was trying to take him out, not playing the ball, but playing the player. Well, if you're watching the live stream, hit that rewind button. You can take a look at it. We actually had a player get ejected in the Sholo game a week or two ago, and we didn't see it from our perspective, but our cameraman across the field caught it, and we had um, – Tyler Rockhill sent us a clip of our live stream and showed us the play, and we're like, well, yeah, that's obviously a penalty and stuff. And so it was cool that the, the fans watching the game were able to give us some perspective that we weren't able to see. Oh, that's awesome. It was kind of fun. So 15 minutes 50 left in the first half of play. Shola with that really quick out-the-door score. Do you think that that woke up Round Valley a little bit? Because we've seen a little more aggression out of Round Valley since. Yeah, well, and – and like I said, you just have one lapse in soccer, and someone can score, and then that's the game. <laughs> you know, well, and, like. and on a and on a team of eleven, it takes one player with one lapse 
that mm -hmm. can tear everything down. It's just one moment of life. Yeah, well, and then you're trying to, you got to build it back. And so after that, you know, we were almost asleep, and now here, <laughs> here's 1-0, and we've been bouncing back and playing pretty good soccer. So on a penalty, when you receive a yellow card, do you have to exit play? Because it looked like he yes. did. Yes. One full play. Okay. So similar to football then. You see that with football. When, when you have something like that, you will leave play. Yep. Uh, Sholo's controlling the middle pretty well. They've got a couple of midfielders here that really play together well. And, you know, Roundball is kind of chasing them around a little bit because they, you know, they're able to control the ball. Bringing it around to the outside. Roundball able to pick Ramon, it up. Yep, here we go. Ramon sends. See if you get the touch back. Oh, keeps Sends it in play. Falling higher up. Oh, nice play by Sholo there. Yeah. Won the ball. Cleared the ball out. In the air karate right shot by number 11. Once again, it's right here to these midfielders controlling the ball. Keaton Slade. Brian Acosta with the ball presently. Yeah, I saw that one. I wondered if they were going to call yeah. that. See, he just hit him behind and... Like I said, played the player, didn't try playing the ball. Just played the player, said, get out of my way, I'm going to push you. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, we had a couple of those in our game, if you guys remember. Well, the, yeah. crowd, the crowd did, because I know the crowd was talking oh, yeah. to the officials a little bit. A <laughs> couple of those girls tucking their shoulder down, not even playing the ball. Usually yeah. Dan talks to the officials, and none of us have to, and he wasn't <laughs> even talking about them, so I don't know. Which don't know. is ironic, because he was an official. <laughs> He feels like he can. He connects with them on that level. He's going to. And he's told us that in previous streams. He's, I've, I've been there. I've been them. And so he just think that he thinks that gives him liberties to just <laughs> yell at him or whatever. I don't even know. So, no. A little bit of substitution action. Did Round Valley take substitutions or just Sholo? Uh, Sholo would since it was their throw in. Yep. Uh, cleared. Goalie comes out. Cleared. Here we go. Good job. So clear me up, Cass, because I might have misheard that. If Sholo were to substitute because they had possession of the ball, are we able to sub if they do as well? If they do. So we could have chosen to, we just didn't. Right. Okay, so I want to make sure I had that one straight. But we couldn't sub without them subbing. Right. Only when we control the ball. Yep. Yep. Oop. Little so grouping. Looks like there's a little miscommunication there from Ron Bali. So Sholo doesn't seem to have problems tracking the ball, especially when it's cleared. We saw that in the Round Valley game. Football on Friday, we had a player or receiver lose track of the ball completely, but I would imagine that ball's got to blend in with the ceiling pretty well when you're yeah. looking for it. Yeah, those lights are pretty bright up there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, we'd see that in basketball too, huh? When oh, you yeah. go to shoot, and it's like right where the rim is. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, and what's so crazy about basketball here is that Usually you're used to a gym that's enclosed and there's a wall eight right. feet behind the basket, right? And then you get round ball and people show up here and there's a wall 130 feet past the basket, right? And it's hard to it's hard to get spatially spaces. aware, right? Unfortunate yeah. to hear that that um, round ball is not going to happen this year, yeah. from what I've heard. It's really a bummer. Um, so for the fans that didn't know that, from what I've been told, the only tournament play that can happen would have to be during the Christmas break. Correct. Correct. And so our uh, the last I heard, round ball will not be happening in the Dome in December. Yeah, we, we weren't able to figure out uh, when we'd be able to get the turf up and get everything set up in time because we're anticipating football will go into December. Right, with playoffs being delayed a little bit. Yeah. Correct. Okay, so here they just they just carted – yeah, and what happened is he moved up too soon. Because when you have a kick like that, you've got 10 yards. You've got to be 10 yards from the kick. And if someone goes in too early, it can be a card. Looks like the officials are discussing. Because if they do it deliberate, I mean, it, it causes the kicker to, you know, to have issues. Yeah. And as you saw, the kicker kicked it right at him. But, you know, that that's kind of a judgment call based on the – Official. So is, the, is you saying that it could have been the other way, that it could have been the player deliberately kicking, or is it purely on the defense there for being in the way or for putting themselves in the way it's of the ball? It's purely on the d on them. They have to be 10 yards from the ball, like period. 
you know, and you'll see them delay gain a lot of times by standing really close to the ball so that the game is delayed, you know, so that it takes them a while and they can set up their defense and the ref has to say, come on, you're two yards from the ball, you're not 10. Right. So that shot on goal was Kevin Flores. Nice, powerful kick, but right at the keeper's hands, he was able to grab it. Right. Ten minutes left to play here in the first half in the dome. Yep. It's getting a little physical. It's it's fun to see. Yep. And there's definitely a line. You can see things start to ramping up. You know, you see things get more and more, and it's that line that you have to juggle with of not taking it over the line and too far. You see it in football as well as momentum ramps up, and it just takes – um, just takes one lapse of judgment again to, to have Correct. things get sour there. Uh, Marissa, have you got to watch the boys play very much this year? Um, I've only seen one game. Um, I think they played Blue Ridge outside. But no, I haven't really been able to watch. You know, I got a lot of stuff going on. So yeah. Well, I mean, and it's hard when you're coaching the girls or the boys to watch the other team just because you don't have very many opportunities and usually your games are on different nights so when they're playing a game you're practicing right so i mean it's completely understandable but i'm here now yeah <laughs> yeah you get to see what happens you show up for five minutes we give you a microphone i something. know <laughs> man is get a step put you on the spot a little bit i get a little stage fright so this is kind of <laughs> new to me you're doing great <laughs> oh. Sholo trying to work it in again. Yep. And you see how they are all spaced around the 18? Yep. Just kind of working to pass, looking to get opportunities. Definitely a kicking the, or a tripping or whatever you want to call it. So round ball gets a kick. That was a perfect flop. <laughs> I was gonna flop. I was gonna talk about theatrics <laughs> a little bit. I was like, so soccer slash drama majors at some point. Not not as much at this level. You don't see a ton of it at this level, but um, levels up past Ooh. this you definitely see some theatrics oh absolutely yeah nice opportunity there um number five brian acosta just not able to get quite to it so round ball he's going to get it was that a corner or is it going to be on the side i don't it think it was quite in the corner i think it's on the side i think it's a throw in uh, nice throw looks like there was a push ramon was looking like oh nobody pushed. nobody home Hey, Pochet's looking to clear it out, but number five comes still. It, he's able to succeed and kick it out of bounds. I really think nine was looking for 13. He was all alone. I think he wanted a little bit of help there to be able to make the goal happen. Right. Hey, oh. Sholo has a kick. Oh, they had the opportunity. Definitely. Couldn't Get Definitely a not, not quite the kick that he wanted in the middle, and it rolled to the side. Not the kick he wanted either, right, right. the keeper. So. That's it. And that's what I'm saying, especially on the turf when it's rolling this fast, it's very difficult to judge and to a lot of times to really get the foot on the ball that you want. Or, or when you, I don't know, play this game for a decade on grass, and then you play it on turf, and all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. You, you know how to judge a ball until you play in the dome. Yep. Send to the corner, number nine going up corner. Looking to see if he can cross. A little bit of aggression there by Round Valley, right towards out of bounds. Six minutes 50 left in the first half. Again, Round Valley trailing by one after an early goal. Are we going to see Acosta with a penalty there? Yeah. He hit him from behind. So as you'll see, he's got to get 10 yards. So there you go, Acosta not quite at the 10-yard mark. And they made him get back. He was looking to bend it like Beckham. Didn't bend, though. Went straight out of bounds. Round Valley's going to get it. Now, Marissa, you play goalie. What what things or advice can you tell us about goalie and what you do as, and coach as a goalie? Um, well, I didn't really have a keeper coach whenever I was in, so I kind of learned from YouTube, honestly. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Um, it's definitely a 21st century <laughs> education right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, it's it's one of the hardest positions to play right there. You, I mean, I know you get to use your hands, but there's so many rules and stuff back there. Well, to me, I see soccer as, okay, so he could have his phone out texting right now, right? Go ahead and catch up on some homework, <laughs> whatever. But then in the three seconds that he's needed, he has to be dialed up to an 11, right? Well, yep. Nice send out. Nice. See, he had to be alert to come out and get that. See, and I would have been texting my girlfriend at that point. It just would have been, just wouldn't have worked. 
Yeah, it's just, it's so dangerous back there, too. You know, my four years back there, I probably had six concussions. Really? Yeah. You remember six of them anyway. We don't <laughs> know how many more there were, but. You know, we, we played Blue Ridge in here my senior year, and I took a ball to the head, and then I took a foot to the head, and asked me what day it was, and I said, I don't know, but I didn't want to get out. Wow. <laughs> and then we ended up tying that game. Um, oh, nice footwork there by 11. Yeah, it's, it, it's hard back there. You know, you have to, you see the whole field. And you're in charge of everybody. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that was definitely a hit from behind. Expected it. Yep, so Rambo is going to have a kick there just outside the 18. Interesting placement for a kick all the way over, almost out well, of bounds. If you play this right, it's almost like a corner kick. Yep. You get all your g players over on the far side, goes up in front of the goal. Ramon with the kick, right okay, at the keeper. Right at the keeper. That orange must work like yellow does, yeah, apparently. Uh, bright colors, that's what it does. <laughs> I mean, that's. That's why you want your keeps to have the bright colors. Cause Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, He's that's off sides. offsides for sure. I Absolutely. think I heard, yeah, I heard the whistle there. The yeah. most confusing <laughs> rule in <laughs> soccer. I think, I think this is what gets people, right, is they just don't understand the offsides rule. That's it. We explained it in the last stream if we took a few minutes to explain it. But at kick... There has to be a defender between um, the offensive player and the goal. Yep. After that, it's a free-for-all. Once the yep. kick has been made, it's a, it's a foot race to the ball. And the thing that's frustrating at times is that's a just judgment call based for the official. It's perspective. If, yeah, if they're not right on line and and the run's happening, they cannot call it. Right. And, and then it's frustrating. I've seen games where the sideline official is calling it, and the middle official doesn't call, doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really lets the goal, and, you know. And <laughs> if you're on that team, you're like, it's offside, it's offside, <laughs> and they just don't. That's nuts. There's some pretty cool tennis technology they have now where they can actually mark the ball in and out with computers and with cameras and stuff. I think you could apply the same technology to a soccer ball and be able to I'm see line levels, right? I'm um, sure. I'm sure. Looks like an but illegal throw going on over there. But who wants to stop the <laughs> who wants to stop the game to see that? Right. Well, and it dehumanizes the game to a certain extent as well, right? If you have these opportunities where a computer is telling you whether it's good or not. Now, did you see that um, they did that in baseball? They had a computer calling balls and strikes. And they had the officials with AirPods in their ear hearing the computer call the game. Wow. But the official had the ability to still call the game. The, but wow. they wanted to see how much the, the, the blue would agree with the, the computer. That's crazy. But again, we have the technology now. You can see it. And the ball in, in the moment, a computer is going to tell you yay or nay. Two and a half minutes left. I'm going to have to tell the seniors to get down there. Hey, Dan, can you pass me the other microphone? Because I can't just have one microphone. Two minutes. Nice give and go. You talk about siloing emotions, man. One lapse of judgment. Almost 40 minutes ago has the game where it's at right now, and Round Valley just has to fight to get the even the score even again. Not to even get right. to the lead, but just to break things uh, back to even. It's definitely hard to switch the momentum up once it's 1-0. It's hard to, you know, because some people are just, as soon as somebody scores, they just they don't want to be in it anymore. Uh, it's, it's so true. That momentum is everything. Kerr clears it out. It's, it's a foot it's race. Oh, great, great See? keeper work right there. You know, and you say, well, he came out way out. But, I mean, that's what you have to do because if he hadn't and just sat back, the guy would have just had a clean shot. Are you going to give him the chance to set up, have a couple touches on the ball and fire? No. No. That's great. Under a minute left to play. Yeah, Round Valley has really bounced back and played very well since that 1-0 goal. And it's sad that it has to be something like that that dials you back in, that wakes you up, uh, that now now it's a two-goal ball game. Now you got to get two to get to the lead yeah. and have a defense that isn't going to let anything through. Come on, 
Oh, send the ball going up. Oof, dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Dangerous. But if you saw number, oh, push from behind. It's going to be. Okay, but if you saw number 10 sprinted and ran in front of the guy that was running to deter him, so he had to adjust his run so that the goalie could make the kick out. I hear Looks three like whistles. Half done. Looks like halftime. Perfect. Well, thanks for having me on. Hey, yeah. thanks for joining thanks us. For joining. Absolutely. Good luck. Hopefully it works out for Round Valley's favor. Hopefully, Absolutely. but I'll be seeing you guys basketball season for sure. Be watching Facebook. We'll let you know if the Lady Elks are going to have another soccer game as soon as we hear it. If they're lined back up, we'll see what the playoffs bring. And, yeah, we're excited to see what basketball is. We'd love to cover some. So if you're interested, we'd love to have you back on the mic if you'd like to party yeah. with us there. If I'm not helping coach, yeah, I'll be there for sure. I love it. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen. See you guys. Group. Thanks. All right, guys, we're going to get things ready lined up for the seniors. We've got three seniors that will be being honored here in just a minute. So let us get things set, and we'll be right back with you. senior night here for the Round Valley Boys Soccer. Please help me welcome to midfield Shaman the Destroyer Matur. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaman being escorted by Ken and Ken Madrid from playing soccer for four years. His favorite memories of soccer were the road trips out of town Center program and has, was accepted to the United States Marine Corps Summer Leadership uh, and Character Development Academy. After graduation, Shane plans to attend or uh, serve a mission for his church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. After the mission, he plans to attend the United States Naval Academy as a naval aviator and hopes in securing a position with the NASA space program. Shane is a member of NHS, where he's serving as the vice president. Also a member of FBLA, where he's serving as the vice president as well. Shaman serves as the technical director in the technical theater class. He would like to thank his teachers in Alpine and in Round Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaman the Destroyer, the Druid.
Yeah. Yeah, Shaman's a good kid. Yeah. Ah, uh, here we go, one of our own. Yep, here's Daniel Pena. Another great kid, he's worked hard, everything that he does. He's worked hard and he's a good hard worker in everything that he does in a athletics and academics. I don't think there's any I don't think there's any slackers in this group. Not yeah. that there I mean that's probably not the term to use. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know what I'm thinking. Right. Thanks to Jacob Reese. Kenny's played for four years. Captain Hustle, you, as you watch the game, see him in the middle of the field, really working hard to get the, the ball. See, over there in volleyball, Roundville just took the lead in that first game, 23-22. Chills. Yeah exciting sorry guys I meant to come back and get this headset and wear this headset with the other mic and try to do both I just ran out of hands so three seniors being honored tonight all of them four-year soccer players I believe I announced yeah so. that's what they said they've all played all four years which is is great because mm -hmm. you see the progress as they go from the time they're freshmen to the time they're senior and they learn the and understand the game so we got an electrical engineer, a naval aviator, and a tr world traveler. World traveler. Just, you know, he's just off to see the world. So congratulations to the Round Valley Oaks seniors, Shaman the Destroyer, Reese Captain Hustle, and Daniel, our cameraman. Daniel was on the very first Let's Go Elks live stream that we did in Marinci when we were on the road. We had a few live streams before that, but I kind of feel like that's where we got our – that's really when we hit our momentum is – um, Stephen, Daniel, and I went on the road with my boy Rustin, went to Marinci, um, and, and broadcast our first game. And so it's it's because of, of the Pinas that, that we are part of the way where we are right now. I mean, we got Dan, who really has been integral in getting us going. Dan, one of our earliest supporters of the live streams in general, um, wanting to see it happen, not really knowing what we're doing. And then at the semi-football game last year, I said, hey, do you want to come up and just talk about the first half since you're a sponsor? Do you want to get on the microphone? And Dan's never left. He's he stayed. He's like, this is kind of fun. Can I just keep talking? And you know what? You guys have you guys have always been real gracious to me. And I, <laughs> I, I've got the gift of gab. So you know, it, we had a lot of fun down there in that Santa Cruz game, and it just carried over. And Friday nights have just been a lot of fun. Well, that's good to hear. We're glad that you're with you. It's it it takes. Well, I mean, look at what our crew is now. I think our crew count is over 10 to set up, run, produce the live stream content that we bring on Let's Go Elks. And so it takes everybody. We're we're excited about partnership or with the partnership and the collaboration we have with Legacy Teen Productions, with the loft and the lodge as it gets built here. Um, we're, we're reaching out to Round Valley High School and Round Valley Middle School. We want to develop this into a program where my hope is that we can hook in with English teachers. And as we teach journalism, we're teaching kids and they're able to do things that hopefully work towards their assignments and we're able to help them learn and, and take some on-the-job skills as they leave. And if they find they enjoy this, then how awesome that they can say, you know what, I've ran a switcher. I've produced live streams. I've been able to do those things. We run a podcast. You know I mean? I'm excited to see where it goes. 
Yeah. You know, it's funny. What's funny is that first conversation we had. Remember the very first conversation? You and I, I think, were at dance. Okay. Uh, it was either dance or gymnastics. No, and we were, we were sitting there talking about, you know, with Facebook yeah, and Facebook going live and stuff. Go why can't, Fa- why Facebook, can't we just become the broadcasters for the school stuff that everybody seems to not I, really I don't, is it care on about? Is it on anything else besides Facebook? So we're on Facebook Live and YouTube, both YouTube. Let's Go Elks. The channels are Let's Go Elks. And so what we find most people are doing is they go to YouTube, watch it on their TV, and then they'll watch the comments on Facebook on their phone as well, so they're on both. And so... Um, Can you turn down three and four over there? It's the music. Yeah, so to Dan's point, I mean, we've been... I've, I've been floating the idea of live streaming for years, but one, the technology and the platform wasn't there. It was super expensive barrier to entry, and so getting into it was super expensive, and... It, things developed over the last few years, and so Dan and I are talking. And in full disclosure, we don't go to dance together. We just both happen to be <laughs> at gymnastics together. But um, but no, it, just the timing was right, and we wanted these kids to get exposure and be able to bring the sports to the fans. And um, we're really proud, I think, of the, of the product that we're building and the thing that we've been able to accomplish well, the last couple of years. It's grown so much from what we initially talked about. It's crazy. Uh, that, you know, I remember at Santa Cruz, uh, I think it was Daniel or Ryan was on the camera. You and Steven were huddled behind this little table. We were in the most awkward place. Only Pima is, had a smaller place for us. But wow. we're on top of the crow's nest, like table all goofy. But um, our goal has always been every stream we do one thing better. We do something a little bit different. And uh, what we do through the amazing sponsorship, Dan Muth included, is that we try to buy something new every time. We try to bring the stream a little more class and, and flair every time that we do it. And um, and here we are. I mean, even since the last time Cass did, we have headsets now, and it's a little right. more on-point thing. So, I mean, we tried to do a little different. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh. Daniel. Oh, Daniel most. saved it. Oh, he saved it. He saved it. So it looked like he was trying to kick in goal, but no, because of him, he kicked it to where it didn't go in. <laughs> he was trying to deflect. Again, that whole changing side Dan, of the field. Dan was getting ready to scream and yell, thinking we scored. <laughs> I <laughs> thought I thought Pena was about to score. I was getting all excited. Nope. No, he's the defender. He's so, the defender. So here we go, Cass. I mean, right away, Sholo comes out, great guns, momentum. Round Valley to has attack. To They've got to respond, you know, and, and, and that's what you want to do in any sport. When you come out the first half and the second half, you want to just jump on them. Explode, want, right? Yeah, you want to get them them back on their heels. And I mean, so there's been some soccer games I've jumped on, or our teams have jumped on them 2 3 zero, and the game's pretty much over. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? Yeah, if you can kill that momentum early on, you just break their spirit, right? Yeah. So we're excited to have this. Uh, Sholo's controlling the ball, but it looks like Ground Valley might be able to gain possession and push it push it back, and, and hopefully they can change the momentum a little bit. Right now the defenders should be saying, push up, push up, push up, because if they push up, then it helps keep them on this side of the, the field. Get the whole game on our side of the field. Right. Well, this is going to sound stupid. I could never figure out why soccer was such a low-scoring game, given the amount of time that you have. Uh But now watching it, and I mean really watching it because of what I'm doing, it's – I can understand why, as a coach, 40 minutes would just go by in a blink. Done, and it's a running clock, which changes things too. I mean, football, the entire game's done in that amount of time, but it's seconds and inches at a time. Well, and you have that break in play every, what, seven seconds. Yeah. And and they're able to decide what play you're gonna run, what you know. What it's a much more coach led game. And Correct. and I have gained so much more respect watching Clancy play, watching my boys play. And that I think has been one of the neatest things is to see my boys grasp the strategy of the game and Correct. see um, see plays develop in the moment. And that I, I really lo- I really love it. I think it's a, a great sport. Which I once thought would be hard to say being a football player. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was yeah. I was a footballer, played the line, and I mean, I love football as well for different reasons. I just soccer soccer has wow. its appeal. Nice play there by the Elks defense. They're right. trying to get it across midfield. Trying to push it up and control the ball. They got 37 minutes to at least tie it up for us to get two more 10 minute overtime halves. Well, you know, football is a game of bursts, right? Yep. 
it's mm -hmm. start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And right. sometimes when it's a grind out football game where it's, you know, two, three yards at a time, you know, pretty soon people are starting to yawn. They, you know, they're looking for the big play. Well, what what was it? Several years ago, the Super Bowl, the score was like ten to seven or something like that. Huge defensive like, game. That was the most boring game. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Guys, people watch for the commercials. Let's let's don't kid ourselves. We know why we watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> but uh, the point I was trying to make <laughs> before we started talking about Super Bowl commercials is. <laughs> I'm starting to see that, you know, soccer is just dynamic. I, I, I mean, it's like watching hockey that you just, if you want to follow the action, follow the ball. And sometimes that's just hard to do. Yep. Yeah, try to be a cameraman because being a football cameraman is completely different. Now they're whipping it back and forth trying to hang on to the ball, and it's it's a totally different beast. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to and follow Dan, two yeah. screens. <laughs> <laughs> one zoomed in, one zoomed out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> do I want this one or this angle? So, Ethan, if you're out there, buddy, and you're listening, I got a new found appreciation for you. I think I'm going to buy you dinner Friday night. Yes. <laughs> so so it's something that we've done as we, as we've tried to expand things is when we have the number of cameras that we do, we need somebody that is legitimately just producing the video, and then they're handing me the video stream. And so we have Ethan with four cameras, walkie-talkies, a bunch of kids. He's herding cats for three hours, and it's absolutely correct. I mean – I don't think he knew what he was getting into when I said, "Hey, Safford, sit down. You're on the, you know, you're on the A10 Mini," and here we are. Yeah, I just following these two cameras. It's, I mean, it's not bad. I can't imagine four. So Stephen from up top, who's running the clock right now, has given us some words that that we need <laughs> to. So I mean, I'm going to hang on to that one when there's a bad play. Um, but yeah. I gotta get my awful, I gotta get my eyes on. Here. So, Mr. Sherwood, he provides us words to you know give during the quarters and such. <laughs> Caddy Wampus, I, I like that one. I've always liked <laughs> that Wampus. one. That play went all Caddy. There you go. So pick one. You got to pick a word to get into into the conversation here. Okay. Ball's out of play. Round Valley going for it. Up here, we're gonna have a gold kick situation here. Thirty-four and a half minutes left in the ball game. Shenanigans is an all-time favorite word that I had. I like that one. Mine's doohickey. Doohickey. <laughs> doohickey. You know that doohickey. The thingamabob with the blinky blinky. Thingamabob. What's it? There's another one. What's it? What's it? The what's it? The whatchamacallit also on the list here. Um, flamuxed. That's a good one. Flamuxed. Whoa, that was loud. Something popped. Yeah, I hit my mic. I'm trying to dig my glasses out, and mm -hmm. I hit the mic. Keeper coming out. He's going to pick it up. It's Noah. He's their keeper. Noah Watley for Round Valley Junior for the Elks. Yeah. So how devastating is it to see the Lady Elks with eight seniors graduating? I mean, that's almost like rebuilding a program when unless you have a solid underclassman thing. But as you've talked about, Cass, when we don't have the depth that we have, that's going to be a big hit for the Lady Elks, I think, next it, year. It, it is, and hopefully they have some younger kids coming up that will be freshmen. Like I said, the 7th and 8th grade has been doing pretty well with some of their spring soccer, especially on the girls' side. I don't know if it's still continuing. It has in the past several years, and that's part of our, our girls' program played for the state championship there for a couple years, and and we're right there knocking on the door. Couldn't quite get over the hump, but they were almost about to win. And a lot of that stems from their youth programs. Nice. Again, you talked about Blue Ridge. You accredited that a lot to their AYSO programs that when the kids get there, they've been taught fundamental, consistent soccer, and then they're there. Um, I think there's a lot to say about that on the football side as well, that if our, our Round Valley youth football is hooking in with the middle school and the high school, it's just going to create better players once they get to that level. Absolutely. And they have experience. And so you imagine you getting to the time you're a junior, senior, and if you have a full team that has played together, yep. then I, the experience is just you, you can't beat it. And, and that's probably a lot of the reason what pulled the, girl, the Lady Elks together tonight was having eight seniors with experience right? so that they're able to pull out that victory because they knew how to play and knew what to do. Looks like we have six juniors on the Round Valley soccer team. So 
uh, they should be lined up pretty well for a good season next year. Lots of sophomores here, two, three, four, six, seven, seven sophomores and a, and a handful of freshmen as well. And so I think with a strong freshman um, onboarding next year, they'll be in a good place to, to play some soccer next year. Is this the boys? Yeah, you're talking about? from what I'm reading on, on the boys' side of things. See, and that's fabulous if you can keep them all, something that especially where our football program is doing so well it gets difficult because some of the some of the soccer players they'll play one year and then decide I'm going to go play, play yeah. football because they're playing for the state championship or or whatever it may be. That's hard because it attracts it, right? Right. It well, is absolutely. Hand. And it's as a coach, it's it's really hard because you want to support all the other programs, but you want your program to be successful. And and when a kid comes and says they're not going to play because they're going to go play football or, or do whatever, it, it makes it hard. Well, and again, going back to the depth in your roster, losing a kid for any reason is right. rough, right? right? I mean, heaven forbid it's an injury. I mean, we saw Choo Choo train with an injury. We've seen Round Valley with a few injuries already early in the season. Makai Funaki, yeah. uh, you know, out a little bit. And so it, it's devastating to any roster when right. we lose anybody for any reason. And then heaven forbid ineligibility, right? They still have to make the grades to even play the game. Correct. So. So many things that keep these kids on the field. And, you know, for a lot of kids, sports um, are, a, are a catalyst for education. Yeah. I, I've heard numerous parents say that my kid was eligible and did as well as he did because that was the motivator. He wanted to be on the field. Ooh, nice, nice footwork there by number nine. Daniel Pena trying to find the ball. Shaman Madrid working oh, some defense. Coming out. Keeper okay. with a kick there, nice move. Be aware, if you saw him for a split second, he's like, can I come out and get it? Or Thought about it, yeah. It? And that's what he has to do, he's got, and he's got to make a split decision because what he does depends a lot. And that shows confidence, right? He made the decision. I, I saw what I thought was a moment's hesitation too, but the confidence that they have by running 30 yards out from the goal to pick up that ball, is that shows years of play, I think, right? That's Correct. huge. Correct. You know, and it's easy to be on the sideline to just be saying, come out, come out, yeah, come What are out. you doing? I know as a coach I was doing it all the time. <laughs> you need to come out because I can see it. Right, perspective's <laughs> slightly different. <laughs> but I'm not the one that's actually making that decision and doing it. Right. So power to the goalies or keepers. I almost feel like we're making the keepers the offensive line of soccer, right? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we talk so much about, like, the uns, the unsung heroes, right? The offensive line's in there. They never get their name called, but they're the ones out there every offensive play making it work. Just like the keeper, he is responsible for the majority of the scoreboard on the defensive side at the end of the day, right? So much happens leading up to him, obviously, but. Right. Well, I you know, I don't know from what I'm seeing. This is. This is a game where everybody has a chance to be the quarterback. You know, yeah. everybody oh, has a chance fair. to be the, you know, everybody has a chance to be the game's hero. Whereas in, you know, in other sports, you, well, in football, you definitely don't have that. Right. You have the guys who, whose names you're calling constantly, and then the guys that are just in the trenches working. So, you know, I can see where soccer is kind of a draw because, you know, if you want to get out there and, you know, make a name for yourself, this is a great opportunity to do it. But any sport, I think across the board, it it all comes up to the weakest link. And so, bottom line, you're only going to be as good as the player that's pushing the least, right? right. Whether it's whether it's that lineman that takes a playoff that causes a sack, or right. the defender that takes a break and that has a ball by him, right? I mean, right. Uh, very few exceptions. You have wrestling, right? Is one of the few exceptions where bottom line, it's Res me or nothing. Wrestling, track, track. Yeah, yeah. There's very golf. Very few one-on-one -on -one sports. And even wrestling has that team aspect, as does track, right? You're rolling up to team points, but when you're running around the track, it's you and a bunch of other people, right? It's That's you know, it. And, and as far as team, you know, team state championship, ooh, they have an opportunity. Oh. Whoa! Right collision. Looks like our keeper just got a hit to the head. Noah's down. He is on down. his feet. He did get up. He felt that one for sure. And that's what Marissa LaRue was talking about. Those type of things, they both were attacking. Yep. And he's going up with his hands, and the other one's coming up with his feet and yep. knees. And it happens a lot where you take a knee or a shin or a foot to the head. Coach Morris happened to make the 100-yard dash over to his team. Give him just a second. Noah is down, taking a second. 
But you're right. I mean, when she said she had six concussions throughout her high school soccer career, that that just astounds me because that's that's football level conversations. That's what right. that's what football is talking about when it comes to helmet safety and things like that. Noah is on his feet. The ref is asking him to be removed from play. Correct. Anytime game is stopped because of injury, you have to substitute. I mean, that's yeah, that's the rule. The goalie, though? I mean, Anyone. isn't there any special consideration for the goalie? Like, if he has to come out, the kid that hit him doesn't have to come out? <laughs> it was a no call right at the end of the day because, again, I think they were both attacking the ball. They were both trying to make the play. Um so now they're, they're switching, going to have to switch the keeper. And this is something that you don't see super often at the high school level. You see AYSO, I saw my boy really enjoys keeper, and there was another kid, and they do halves at keeper, right? But, um, again, talking about roster depth, how often do you have somebody that's ready to play backup keeper and keep it going when you're down one point and you're trying to make it up? Well, and, again, again that goes with the depth of your team. Right. You know, but a as a coach, you always have two. You always have two keepers. S one's obviously better than the other one, but you have to have someone else that's willing to step in and, and be there and because you never know injuries like that happen, and he's out six weeks because he's got a concussion. So Ricky Page, I believe, is our keeper that's coming in right now. I saw number three running to the side, and he's throwing yellow on right now. I believe we're going to see Ricky Page come in, but Noah – is going to be standing at midfield because I believe at our first opportunity, Noah's going to be right back into the ball game. Yeah, absolutely. So here comes Ricky Page, sophomore for the Round Valley Elks. Yep. While we have just a second and breaking the action, guys, we want to thank our sponsors again for, for making this happen. Um, it, can't say enough good things about the people that help us bring the action to you. And so a huge thanks to, to Booger Reds, uh, to La Square Advanced Automotive, to Molly Butler Lodge, to the Pop Shop, and White Mountain Chiropractic and White Mountain Off Road this evening for being sponsors on the live stream. It's because of them that we're able to do the things that we do um, with the things that we have while soccer balls are being hurtled at us at various speeds. <laughs> and so uh, Ricky Page back in the ball game. Uh, back, he's in the ball game, getting his gloves on. It's kind of like in in baseball or softball when the, you have to change the. The catcher, catcher out. <laughs> you, know, you have to <laughs> go through a complete <laughs> change of everything. That's especially at the little league level, right? <laughs> or if that poor kid was up to bat and he gets out and then takes a year and a half to get him all padded back up. Yeah. <laughs> Had lots of experience with that back then. Really really so we shouldn't switch it back out, right? There we go. That, now we're able to. Because Round Valley has control. So Ricky Page in the game for about three and a half seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good job. That's the rule. Hi, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and the real delay is that he had to go get dressed up for it. We had to glove him up. We had to get a jersey on, and so he's going to head back over. But we got Noah back in. Hopefully Noah's all right. Yeah, hopefully he is because he's really doing a good job. Absolutely. Right to keep. I think with the intent, I mean, that was a great play by Sholo because the intent was to that player. but. Yeah. Did you see him hit him afterwards? The intentional yes. contact there. Yeah. It, and so, you know, I talked about this Yellow last card. time. Yellow card. It is. It is. And I talked about this last time. Wh when I played, that that wasn't a, an issue. But there's so many concussions happening with the keep. That about five to five to ten years ago. You touch the keeper, it's on. You touch point. it, it's a yellow card well, automatic. I, I noticed that in in the girls' game and in the first half of this game, Whoever the whoever it is bringing the ball down, let's just say the striker, they'll come down and literally challenge the goalkeeper whether they have the ball or not. Right. Kind of like, you know, in football where you have the fair catch and the guy will run up and get within. It's intimidating. Halo. You're still trying Be because yeah. if he bobbles the ball for one second, guess what? It's yours. It's yep. yep. And I and I think I think that's what Sholo was doing. It looked like he was trying to shut it down. He just couldn't get to. He couldn't get stopped by the time he found the keeper. Uh, maybe it was intentional, maybe it wasn't, but. Well, I, I, I think he just hit him. Like, he could have stopped and just run past. Okay. But instead, he, he hit him. No, okay, he so hit there's him. some strategy there. So I'm almost wondering why soccer doesn't come up with a halo rule like like football did. Do you have three yards or whatever? Well, no it's touchy. a one, yeah, it's a, th it's a three-foot halo around 
the person who, you know, signaled fair catch in football, but like the goalkeeper should have that halo around them. So a safe space. Yeah, they can be challenged, but you can't get within that three foot circle or hmm. or you get a card. I I'm just saying if you know, if they're worried about injury like that, then they should institute some kind of halo like well, that. Well they have that to where you can't touch them for sure. So it, I think it's like an unsaid number. It's just don't yeah. touch the keeper essentially. You just, you just don't touch him. If you t if he has control of the ball, you don't touch him. Well, there's a whole lot of touching going on for a no touch rule. But that's when the <laughs> that's when the <laughs> I'm just saying. That's when the ball's loose though. <laughs> the the touching happens when the ball's loose. Keeper has to have control of the ball. And and so if if, the, if I can beat him to like the ball's in the air, if I can beat the keep to the ball and I can head it over him, you know, if I head him in the head, if I hit him, like it's contact. It's just it's just gonna happen. Because the keeper is just another player on the field at that point. Correct. So the keeper only has that protection when he possesses the ball. When yep. he uses his hands. Okay. Yep. See, I, I'm learning. I'm, I'm getting this. Ball's going to come out of play. Defensive move by uh, Pena there. Can't believe Daniel's a senior. That's not allowed. we got to well, have a cameraman. I, know. I don't it know. Seems like just yesterday he's a freshman. <laughs> Ryan's coming up, though. You'll have Ryan next year as a right. freshman. And so right. more Pena's. He's yeah, but the, the question's going to be is Ryan going to I wasn't going to say it, Dan. I wasn't going to say it because that'll be the conversation. Because right now he's playing football, right? He played for you yeah. on, on the he, team. Yeah, he played for me. He was my center this year in eighth grade. Oh, that's right, because I asked if he was going to be on a live stream with us or not, and Dan said, you can't have my kid. <laughs> <laughs> can't have Ryan. He's with me. Yeah. No, you know, and he filled in at middle linebacker, too, and played defense really tough for me this year. So I. What was that whistle call? Pushed from behind. Pushed okay. him in the back. So Sholo is pretty aggressive, I'm noticing. Yeah. Boys soccer is pretty aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Well, and if you notice. Oh, it's kind of okay. like kind of like basketball on a lot of so you want to get get down incoming you want to get down and get position kind of like a box out in basketball mm -hmm. and if the ball's coming to me and I'm down I can control the ball and if someone pushes me from behind or does anything it's a foul yeah like, no matter what because I have that position so you want to get in and get set because you're you're claiming that space correct well, of course, unless you're north of I-40, and then that's that just... That should have been a handball. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you're north of I-40, it's perfectly <laughs> acceptable to get up and rub up on people. <laughs> to do whatever you <laughs> want. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm just they've speaking in a, ba in a basketball reference. Yeah. Yep. They've, they've got a different season ahead of them as well, correct? The, yeah. um, the reservation teams, those teams, they're going to be playing in their own, with their own group, right? It's a little bit different thing going on this year. Yeah, their own league. They're not going to be part of the AIA. Well, they are part of the AIA, but they aren't part of the AIA regular through 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A. So they went back to their own little – because years ago they used to have their right. own little league. For this season. Just for this season because they, the whole thing is shut down. I mean, Nice. Oh. My goodness. So that's a COVID concern. They figure if they can keep it local, then they don't have to right. worry about – Less travel. And, and and that's where what you see, some of those players are transferring to Holbrook and Winslow. You, you were saying that earlier, and I wanted to make that comment. And so here you're circumventing all of the things you're trying to avoid in the first place. Right. Yep. But they, they're, they're going there. Oh, oh Round Valley battling at Cholo's goal. But yeah. the, the side effect that we're going to see from that is a lot less travel for us, as I understand it. Where we're right. placed in basketball now, we're going to have a lot more local games. We're going to be a lot closer, so it's going to make a – We're a actually not. I don't know if you heard what our s conference is. No. Our conference is the South, so we have Marin – South. Oh, so we're going Mar to Tucson now. Marinci, Pima, <sighs> Great. All, all of those schools down there. I thought we were in a different situation, so new news here. Yeah. From Cass Pond. Because basketball is 2A still. Yes, it's everything but 3. football. Yeah. So, and well, and all of our league co canceled. I mean, they're, they're not in our league anymore. Well, so. Coach Emerald put it out to the softball players that softball's 2A Metro. Oh, really? That's what, that's what Emily was telling me. Which is going to be playing who? All the 2A Valley, Valley schools, all most of the prep schools. Wow. Well, have fun with that. 
Yeah. Frequent good. flyer miles. Well, you know, I'll change. I'll exchange driving to Phoenix in March than going to Pinon or many farms. We're going to talk about the road to Pinon. I mean, that's <laughs> it's a reoccurring topic on the live stream. It really is. <laughs> the road to there's Pinon. A, there's a scenic route, that as I understand it. Handball. So they, two of them, two missed handball yeah, they calls. Missed those handballs. If you saw, he just del deliberately with his elbow just brought his elbow out and hit the ball. 20 minutes left in regular play. Right now, your Elks trailing by nice one. Clear. Daniel Pena. We will be la back live streaming in the Dome on Friday. Your Round Valley Elks taking on the Snowflake Lobos here at home. Shaping up to be an interesting ball game, wouldn't you say, Dan? Yeah, I think so. I'm. It's going to be exciting, I think. I, You know, if the Bells coach with the same tenacity that they coached against Sholo, um and have a similar strategy, I think we have a big chance. Cass, what do we see there? Uh, it, it, what I talked about before, he had position. He had his down. He gathered the ball in front of him, and the guy came behind him and pushed him. Okay. So it's just a Now, why isn't that a card? To, to push from behind? Well, on that particular play, when he was beat in position, he didn't have possession of the ball, why did he not get carded for that because it's kind of he's not deliberately You're saying like flagrant foul would yeah, that be the, he's, he's the parallel not deliberately okay. he's just trying to get the ball so he pushes him to try to get the ball type of thing so, so, it's, it's, so it's a difference between a foul and a flagrant foul right oh, okay. or intention a it becomes right. intention daniel and, pena and again ultimately the question that always comes in soccer is was he playing the ball or was he not? Playing the player or playing the ball? Right. If yeah. he's trying to play the ball, then then it's just going to be a foul and then you move on. If it's deliberately I take you out yeah. or I deliberately do something that's very dangerous that could blow out your knee or take your ankle out or something like that. Malicious intent, essentially, yeah. at that point. So Round Valley Varsity um, – Volleyball going on right now. Elks currently trailing two. Period is the match, correct? Or yes. the set, excuse set. me? It's the set it's the within set. the match. Yep. So it's the second set of the of the match. Game set match, right? The structure. 72-23 yep. it looks like. We go, Sholo's going up the right side with the opportunity. You see guys trailing in. He's looking to cross. Drops back. Simon Gr Round volley now still going up the right side. Goes to the middle. Keep comes out. Plays dead. Now I'm noticing on the defenses that they get linear when they're in front of the goal, they kind of line up and form a like an impromptu barrier. Is that that's is that it. pretty standard there, Cass? That's it, and he's looking to be there. They're looking to be there so that they can clear it. If one moves, gets out of the position, the other one can just slide over and be in position to stop it. I'm also noticing that both defenses are pretty disciplined. They're not being drawn out quite as much as what we noticed in the girls' game earlier. Correct. They're being disciplined and staying home. Oh. Shello drop back, shot on goal, goes way high. You'll see one of the plays, if you end up going, if an offensive player ends up going up the right or the left side, a play that they make a lot is they'll come up kind of on the end line, they'll, they'll go towards the goal, and then pop it back to players dropping back just to fire it fire it in the goal, which is a great strategy just be, because the goalie's dealing with the side and then it comes right to the front and he's got to move quickly. Uh, look how fast Ramon got. Over Back up there. there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wish he'd have ran like that for me when he was in the eighth <laughs> grade. <laughs> I'm going oh. to I'm have to talk to that kid. Yeah. Well, he did run <laughs> in, like, track. He was running the 800 and the mile and just dominating in the eighth grade. Well, he, 
<laughs> when he was playing football, he ran like those pads weighed 100 pounds. He just, yeah. Round Valley losing their second set against Snowflake on the varsity side. We're going to change things up. Now, in volleyball, you switch sides every game, every set? They used to They used to switch sides. COVID is now. You stay where you're at. That you stay right where you're at. And there's no contact, so they can't high-five under the net or anything like that. They Stay away from each other. Huh? Well, and look yeah. at look at the dome. I mean, it can't get much more symmetrical than where the volleyball field is, I the volleyball court is. I don't think you could consider advantage either way over there. No. Well, and because of the way the bleachers are set up, it's not like, you know, you go to Snowflake's gym or Sholo's gym right. or, you know, where you've got a rowdy side and a non-rowdy side. You know, St. John's being a glaring example of that. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, we, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what do, you, what do you guys think of the bleachers for the away teams in the Dome this year? I love it. I love it. Do you think that's something that will persist? Do you think they'll try to keep that going? I I hope they do because, quite honestly, it. I think they need, especially in 2020, Right. there's, a, there's just a lot of emotion built into this year because of everything going on. I think it's good to separate the fans. Yes. You know, just because, you know – Things tend to get rowdy, and especially in the dome. And you don't need, you don't need fans having at each other because of the team they right. support. Well, and I don't know if you remember several years back when Round Valley played St. John's, and things just kind of blew up because there was a late hit. Yes. And everyone was on the same side, and you had fans <laughs> just yelling at They're each right other. They're right there, yeah. <laughs> just because they were all. Well, this was ground zero for that battle. Right. It was just it was just huge yell, yell, you guys did this, you guys did this. I mean, it was just yeah. unreal. And so the 50-yard line was basically the boundary between those two sides. And the reason I know that is because I was sitting with the Cisco's over on the 40 about three rows up. <laughs> <laughs> so You're uh, feeling it. Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, I don't care. I don't care if it's checkers or football. If it's... If it's a, any type of contest where a score's kept between Round Valley and St. John's, it's going to be competitive. It's going to get competitive. Correct. I went down there for the volleyball game, and you know you had a you had administrators from both schools holding both student sections back because they were just taunting and you know taunting each other. And yes, you want a certain amount of spiritedness, you, absolutely, because that's what makes the games fun. But there's a line there that you should never cross. cross. Absolutely. So you can see that that rapid trying to keep the momentum right there by Round Valley. Ball was out. Player called for the ball, had it back in play within a number of seconds, trying to hang on to the momentum. But then we saw the whistle. What was the, the whistle that stopped play, Cass? Uh, I don't – It maybe sub? Because Round Valley kept the ball, so right. I wasn't sure what happened there. I think there was a sub because the kid came running out with a green towel. I don't know yeah. what that – I don't know what the green towel is. It's just kind of something that they – technically you're supposed to be wearing it so that the ref knows that you're the sub and you come in so that there's not an extra man on the field. Surprised they're allowing anything actually, right, for right. some kind of an exchange this year. But, but I mean, because the game is so fast-paced, it rarely – <laughs> it rarely happens. Right. Usually they just hold it, hand it, go. hand it to the person that's coming out. Twelve minutes left in the ball game, guys. Again, take the first three minutes of the game away, and it's a scoreless ball game. Correct. Okay. So, the side judges, the flags. Are they parking airplanes? What are the flags for? To, to, they they hold it up to let the middle official know that there's a foul. They've seen call. something. Yeah, there's a yellow card because he. Grabbed all shirt. over that kid's jersey, yeah. yeah. He was just trying to give him a hug. And I don't know what your guys' And problem. see, that's <laughs> deliberate. That's deliberate. He's trying to grab his shirt. and so. Yeah. Now, is there yeah. an accumulation of yellow cards per team, or is it just player-based? Player-based and coach-based. Oh, and coach-based. If a coach gets two, he's out for the next game. So this we actually experienced these boys. Robbie, when they went to uh, – Payson. Just a few weeks ago this happened. A few happened. weeks ago, yeah. Oh, no. They got in each other's way. But they... Oh, recover possibly? Yeah. he Robbie got two yellow cards in Payson, and so he had to sit out the next game. And 
So very similar to football in that aspect. You get like ejected, ejected. It's the rest of this game and the following. So right. what's the red card then? The red card's immediate. Like, it, and you have a, see, it, when two yellows is equal to what they call a soft red. It's so a pink, if you will. So it it's, it's means you got two and then you're out, and you don't lose another player. If you get a red card, and a red card is I deliberately tackle you, take you down for whatever reason, or uh, and that creates a power play. Or correct. So, correct. That's when you lose a player for the whole rest of the game. So oh. your hockey comes into play. You're down a player, and not okay. just for two minutes. Yeah. If I tackle, the, I mean, uh, another one is if I kick the goal, and a person that's not the goalie. Just catches the ball, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like that's a red card. Really, <laughs> it, it is because, because it's flagrant hands. Essentially. Yeah, it's flagrant me stopping them from scoring <laughs> a goal, and I don't have the rights to do. Nice. That. Just under ten minutes, guys. Another great game of soccer. I mean, this this one feels different. Again, we've talked about the difference between boys and girls soccer, but um, a lot of action happening. A lot more cards. I mean, I think we've had four or five yellows at this point. Right. Well, and they've all been on Sholo. Oh, no, there was one on us. The first one yeah. was on us, I believe. Yeah. But given the physicality that sure. Sholo's playing with. There we go. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a card on that. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's reaching for his, Cause his if, pocket. If you watched it, he just deliberately went and pushed him, just hit him. He wasn't trying to play the ball, wasn't trying to do anything, just hit him. I thought he just got tangled up in his own feet. I, I didn't see it. So in the in the <laughs> second half, I feel like Sholo has done a much better job controlling the ball. I think we've seen Sholo with the ball on their side of the field where they want it much more than Round Valley. Right. Um, and again, you got to you got to shoot to make to make goals, and we haven't seen Round Valley with very many. Yep. Have they had any shots on goal in the second half? Uh, not that I can remember. I don't think they have. It's been it's been really the game's all been. Uh, between the 40s, between the 30s. Well, and, and really, Sholo hasn't had that many shots on goal either. No. No, the defender, the defenders for both have done an extremely good job of get, clearing Rambal the ball gonna, out of there. Rambal is going to get the ball. Offensive opportunity. Yes, they have an opportunity up here. Hey, did you hear that? It almost sounded like I knew what I was talking about. I liked it, and I interrupted you. I'm sorry. I totally messed yeah. it up. I was going to say they had the opportunity on the 25-yard line too. <laughs> well, I've been doing that, yeah. You just say yeah, between the 40s. The game's been happening between <laughs> the 40s. It's all good. Well, there's 40s out there. So. That's right. That, see him pulling his shirt. Yeah, so when you're hand fighting like that, pulling against each other, you know, who do you who do you warn? The non-possessor of the ball then? Does that become the offender? Correct. If one person has the ball or has advantage to the ball and the other pulls for you not to get the ball, then it's pulled on. It's a game of advantages. Yep. We talked about that earlier. Sholo's going to get the ball, I believe, over there. Two games going on, there's al there's always that like cross-whistle action that can happen, and I was like, was that a volleyball whistle? <laughs> but I believe it was for us. It's a nice send. And again, yeah. great. Oh, no. Bad bounce on the ball. Keeper yeah. way out of the box. Round Valley He's defense. He's got to hustle back to get to cover. Hey, there was no defender back. Why wasn't that out offsides? Where? Yeah, when? Sholo, just then. Sholo's down. The only person between, the only person was the goalie. And Sholo was taking the ball down. There was no defender down but, there. But when the ball was kicked, the person was up here, and he outran the round volley person. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ball. Off offsides is marked where the ball is kicked, and then after that it's a free-for-all foot race to get to the ball. And so Sholo just kicked. Kerr with another goal, or yep. Kerr with a goal. Yep. From just outside the 18, ball popped out. Right into the upper right, upper 90 is what they say, upper 90. Okay. 
Now with six and a half minutes left to play, there's a huge difference between an 0-2 ball game and an 0-1 ball game. Correct. Correct. Round Valley, I think we're going to see, I don't want to call it desperate, but I think we're going to see them make different attempts that we wouldn't have seen earlier because you've got to get it to the goal now. Correct. That fly is just all up in our business tonight. It is. It's got to be the only fly left. I think it's the in one fly in the dome, actually. <laughs> in northern Arizona, that's it. He's the sole survivor. Well, in the dome, I mean, come on. He's got the climate. He's good. <laughs> He'll be here for track. Round Valley's got the ball controlling it. Reese here in the middle of the field. Kicks it up to the middle, but then Sholo's right there to clear it out. You see, I mean, the game is pretty intense right now, and Round Valley's really trying to scrape and try to find what they can to score. I don't see a lot of frustration, though. I think at this point's where you're going to see Round Valley start to break down if they're going to, and I don't see the players there yet. I don't see them frustrated, making really, really bad plays at this point. Right. Oh, all right, Cass, get it done. Uh, it's soft. It's too soft. <laughs> Working it across the field, trying to get it in. Let's see what. Um, Send up to Ramon. See what Ramon, Ramon does at that. The left side. Good, good ball movement. If they can control it and take advantage of it. I mean, by nice it. attempt by Flores there, trying to get around two or three Sholo defenders, but Round Valley not just just not able to get the offensive uh, positions that they need right now. Correct. See it. Whistles all over the place. Now, do the boys have any more games, or is this the last game of the regular season as well? Uh, like uh, Stephen was mentioning, that they rescheduled the St. John's, St. Game. John's game. So I think they'll have another game next Tuesday against St. John's. That's but right. it, it's away, it's not here. That's a boot. But if that game had not got canceled, yes, this would be their final game. And how are they looking from a playoffs perspective? Um, as far as I know that they are not going, they don't have an opportunity to go in to so make the, the playoffs. So the Lady Elks with some playoff hopes will see what comes of the bracket creation. Again, um, Stephen telling us and Cass telling us about the PowerPoint situation that it's just a considering, or a considering factor, but not the end-all, be-all, I guess. Uh, hopefully it falls in Round Valley's favor. Round Valley's got to make something happen here in the next minute or so. There's Sholo's doing a lot of send balls. They're just going through right to the keeper. Yep. Slow the game down. That's yep. 10, 15 seconds every time they do yep. it. And here's this is this is what I meant more with basketball control on the other side. Here you got them playing it back at the three-point line, slowing the game down. Right. Yeah, and if they can win the ball and control it like they are right now, it can just take so much time off, and that's... Substitution coming in for Sholo. Other player just exiting behind, so the game can resume as quick as possible. Just under three minutes of play. Your Rambali Elks trailing by two here in the Dome. Again, we will be back on Friday, kickoffs at 7 o'clock for the Round Valley Snowflake game. Catch the action live here at Let's Go Elks. We're going to be streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. We should have the whole crew. It should be crazy, except for me. I guess the whole crew, except for me and Steve, and we'll be running the, we'll be running the show show. The show, the big show, huh? Welcome to the big show. Friday. Friday. Oh, yeah. Me and Ethan again. Dan's eyes twitched just a little bit just now. <laughs> Poor Dan. I told him that he was going to produce the stream on last Friday, so he sat <laughs> down to about a million buttons, and he's trying to be like, okay, <laughs> which ones do I push? How do I do this? And we, we kind of gave Ethan both jobs, which I think was slightly unfair, but we didn't have a lot of other options, unfortunately. Well, we do this week. We'll see what we can do. And I haven't had any follow-up on that, so we'll see what we can get. Daniel Pena. With the touch. Minute 40 to go in the game.
Cholo 2, Round Valley 0. You know, there were several, one of the years we played here, I scored two goals off of the goalie kicking it big like that. Got him. And it flying down here, bouncing, and just outrunning the other team's defense to go down and score. Nice. So the goalie was the one that assisted me. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the pass from the goalie. Yep. You're just bragging now, Cass. No, it was. <laughs> He's that good. It was Ooh. fun. It was cool just because, you know, it just. How happened. often does that happen, right? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't happen that often. It happened twice in one game. It's just like, holy cow. Shot on goal for the Cougars goes wide. Round Valley with a goal kick. 40 seconds left in the ballgame. Those fake beads always make me laugh, like when you see them pop up from a ball bouncing or for somebody kicking, just like <laughs> the, rubber the rubber poof. Yeah, it's dust. It's dirt. Yeah. You know, but it is, if you've been down there and you've played on it, it is comfortable. It is much, much better than the turf we played on when <laughs> yeah. we were in high school. You know, I got to tell you, refing on this field, I didn't like it. Really? The turf was harder on my ankles than a grass field. Uh, because that, what happens is when you're running, especially if you have girth, <laughs> girth, when your feet land on that rubber, it gives. And I have a tendency to walk on the outside of my feet anyway. You supinate. So what yeah. happens is just I had a heck of a time keeping my ankles from rolling over. All right. I do that as well on my right on my right foot only, and so it's made it running like that's interesting. That's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Your Round Valley Elks being shut out by the Sholo Cougars at senior night here, two to zero. Again, a really a really enjoyable game of soccer. Two plays, two moments uh, that really changed the pace of the game. Again, as we said earlier, a lapse in judgment. You know that kind of that kind of shut shut that down, changed it up a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that first goal came in, what, the first minute and a half? All right. It was so quick. We were just talking, getting the game started, and we're like, oh, they scored. I don't know who scored. Well, well they, they kicked it in from this sideline, and it just it went just into the what, upper 90. What, is that what you called it? <laughs> the, yeah, he's catching on, the upper 90. The upper 90. Well, it, and it to me, it deflated me from a momentum perspective. Like, in that moment when they scored that early on, I'm like, oh, is that what this game's going to be? You know, and yeah. then it wasn't. And then the whole the rest of the half, Round Valley turned it up, turned it on, right. and we had some really good, really good soccer. Really good soccer. And they played hard, and, I mean, you got to be proud of them. They they really battled. So just, they're, they're just a bummer. Sholo, Sholo won more ball, or won the soccer ball more. Yep. And as a result, they, they end up winning. Did a better job, I think, in the second half as well, controlling the game. Yeah, and, and just the second half, I think they held on to that lead. They knew what they needed to do, controlled it, maybe slowed things down a little bit, I don't know, but did just a really good job, I think, in controlling the, the game here in, in the Dome tonight. So what's this tradition coming out and thanking? Is that thanking the fans? Yep. Yeah, yeah, thanking them for coming and supporting. It's kind of a cool little gesture, I think. Yep. Almost yeah. one that football should adopt. <laughs> Well, and, well I, and the fight song might be is a, the, fight song. the version of that because that's an ode to the fans, right? right. That's really showing school spirit, just different thing. It's the same sort of same sort of thing, except when you lose a football game, you don't sing the fight song. Fight song, but in soccer, you still thank the fans for coming. Yeah. All right, guys. So to wrap it up, let's look at our craziness here one more time while we start tearing down the cameras. But uh, any last words, Cass, and your thoughts? You know, it's been a real pleasure, and these these seniors for both the boys and the girls to come and give it their all and to come and play this last game has been really a, a great opportunity for them. I, I, You know, every one of them gave their all, and they're all such great kids. You know, it, it's, it's a ending of one thing when, you know, especially this fall season when they play that last game, and it's just like, it hits real because they're like, I'm never going to play another soccer game again or I'm never going to play another volleyball game or football. You yeah. know, it, it, it gets real with them that this is my last year. And so my hats go out to each and every one of the senior boys and senior girls. Uh, they worked hard. It was fun to, to watch them play and go Elks. I, I watched Moneyball uh, recently, and the, a quote in there says, you know, tips their hat to that, that 
You know, at one point we're all told when we don't get to play the little kids game anymore. Some of it's it's 18, some of it's it's 40. And for a lot of kids, for the majority of people, this is that moment. For the Lady Elks, that might have been their moment pending the playoff play. Yeah. Um, I remember my last. It was Alchese at home right here. We played Alchese for our last game, and I remember a lot of those games. I remember the last play of our homecoming senior year. You know, some of those things just stick with you. You're not gonna you're not gonna forget. And so, Dan, anything else you want to say as we've educated you on soccer a little bit tonight? No, you know, I, it's a dynamic game. I think I could get into it. I, you know, I, I'm a football hockey guy. So soccer, once I started to develop the mental correlation, it wasn't really that bad. I mean, in that, that didn't come out right. <laughs> it wasn't near as painful <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. When well, I came in, I thought, I'm dead. Well, I, the lear- I thought the learning curve was going to be a lot steeper than what it was. But now that I've got a feel for it, it's – you know, soccer looks like a very interesting game. It, there's a lot more to it than I thought, you know, because I always had the opinion it was just a bunch of kids running around kicking a ball. And in Also the, true. In the, well, just very rudimentary. But understand, you know, when they would pull me out from the parents and I'm out there refing a, you know, four- and five-year-old AYSO right. soccer game, you know, because my kids are running right. around out there, that's – kind of what it was that was my that was my only exposure this is different i see plays i see setups i see what the coaches are doing i see the chess moves on the field as it's going so i get it now u4 is hurting cats let's not you know it's just it's mob ball and it's really i think when the kids turn around eight or nine you see strategies start or the potential to be able to teach kids how hey if you stand over here guess what He'll kick it to you, right, and you're alone. Right. Like, so I think that's where you start seeing the game change. My boys play in U14 um, his first year as an 11-year-old, and you see it's a whole different game. It's a full-size field. He's playing a whole different game of soccer, and it's super enjoyable. Yeah, I, I envision teenagers running it, collecting around the ball, kicking the each same other game. in their shins same until game. the ball came popping out. You know, <laughs> I just – I'm sorry, but that was my only point of reference. So, but Guys, I think that's going to wrap us up then. Um for for the soccer game tonight, our next live stream will be Friday. We'll be setting up for the, the football game here in the Dome. Um, once again, a huge thanks to all of our sponsors. Um, and, again, those silent partners as well that just want right. to help us make these things happen. A huge thanks to Cass for joining us, for bringing soccer knowledge to the stream. We really appreciate well, I appreciate you. you inviting me. I mean, I'm waiting for that football invite. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. come on up. Dan needs Dan needs somebody else on the microphone on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, hey, I'm just <laughs> If you want to come up and help Ethan and I, that'd be great. Yeah, so we've got going but, but yeah, I would be that coming like, uh, I think that was a hit. <laughs> yeah. It'll be it'll be Dan. It'll be Dan with soccer. It'll be the other way around. Like, so Dan, why'd they call that? Why was that why why is his helmet not it, on it anymore? It looks like a traveling. What, what yeah. was now wait we make we make that joke. We definitely make that joke all the time. And so I guess a shout out for anybody still watching that if you're interested in being part of Let's Go Elks, let us know. I mean, we reached out to Cass because he loves the game and if you love the game, we'd love to get you involved in the sport that you love because we want to broaden our reach and that goes for high school and middle school kids as well again we're trying to expand what let's go elks can do because the few of us can only be in so many places at once and we can only do so many things at once and so if you want to be involved um like dan just come pick up a microphone and never leave then then come (laughs) join us um again like Cass, we we appreciate all the help because let's go elks is is such a team effort at this point it is much more than me which was one of the scariest things for me when i felt it a season or two ago really grow outside of me which has just been an awesome ride and so huge thanks to dan and all the other sponsors on let's go elks you started you started to wind up and i stopped you but i mean it it humbles me every time that people sign up and want to be part of what we're doing and we appreciate you sharing with us your hard-earned money so that we can bring things like this to to the community to round valley and so there's one of your camera right there i'm not good with backwards camera angles but that's mr ryan pena he has daniel's protege if you will because daniel's going to graduate and leave us but hopefully we have ryan for a few more seasons so uh from let's go elks game number two of the night here in the dome round valley again with a loss unfortunately zero to two against sholo on senior night um i'm wesley mcbride dan mooth cast you guys have a great night